first I'm gonna tell about my family, see. I'm a, I'm a Daddy Sanderson's daughter from, a, he was from a Tennessee. And my mother was uh, Mississippi, but I was born down in Wabash, Arkansas, a Napa Pittman's farm, which is my grandfather. And I was raised here in uh, West Helena, partly in West Helena and Wabash. And so my son was born at Wabash, C. Dale Davis, dad is in John Davis, the grandmother, George Ann Watson. And so I am the mother of C. Dale Davis. And uh, this is my original home. And my mother and father, my daddy was named John Sam, my mother named Idella. And so uh, this is a home, and this is where I live in West Helena here. And 421 South Corinthian. And see there, Davis, I have a picture of him when he was 17. And uh, I just not remember what year it was taken, but it's back, you know, in, in the forties. But I don't forget when it was. I'm awful proud of him. And so that was his talent, you know. When a little bitty kid, he started that music, you see. He tapped my brum and he'd make, take a barrel hook, you know, a, bar, a hook off a barrel, and he'd take them string, tap my broom, and then he'd put two strings on it, and then he'd have it up outside on the porch outside the house picking it. And I'd be looking for my broom, and he'd be done took it and made him some strings. <laughs> I said, oh, the barber's got my broom, and I'm going to wear the broom. <laughs> slide up and down the string with it and mess around there. And then I developed to play that way. I play the heavy type uh, guitar, bass and lead. And uh, I'll, uh, I'm gonna give you a little what I'm talking about. 
I call it like this. Sometimes I bring a split across, sometimes I carry an angler. Why I do it like that so I can get particular strings that I need for my... Then I get them all if I want to. I can get just some of them and I can get just half of them. See, I test either one I want to, same as you would with your finger. But only the way, only it's, uh, you can do more with your finger than you can with a bar knife, if you understand me. Uh, and this is my way, left-handed, two fingers, I want a hell of a butter knife, that's all I use. <laughs> his music is the best there is. There's no better. And so I enjoy his music all the, whenever he plays. Every time when I can go, I like to go because I love him. There's no better. I've heard other people play, but not like him. And uh, I love his music. It's the best there is as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I think he's great. There isn't any better blues. I went over to hear him at a place out in the country that he was playing, and I had never heard him before. And when I heard him, the first thing I did was I got up and started dancing because uh, I liked his music. It was really great to me. First time I ever heard him, he was, I think he was playing Chicken or Hawk. I don't remember what, what he was playing, but... That way it was. And uh, ever since he, I heard that song, that was mine. <laughs> That's my song. Chicken and the Hawk. Well, it's special to me for one thing because, well, because I'm an Indian for one thing. It, it, there's a, a great meaning in that song. And the way he sings it, it, it brings it out more and makes it, there's a more feeling there. That was a little bit of chicken fell out of love with that chicken hawk. That was a little bit of chicken fell out of love with that chicken hawk. He fell head over heels, baby, for that house we saw. Take me up in the sky. 
fist, pick me up, honky, baby, pick me up in the sky. I get a little bit of chicken, baby, and I don't know how to fly. Guitar, I learned to play it. Well, then I started playing off a public then, but I was a young boy. And the older guy that I play with, they had to get permission for me to come in the place. Well, after they found out I was a pretty good musician, well, they, they let me in, but I couldn't mix with the, you know, the grown ups. I just stayed in one spot. And what no alcohol allowed to be served to me. Before I was playing, I'd sneak in, you know what I mean? Uh, the fellow uh, called Jesse Mills, he lived in the same place where we lived. He's an excellent, good piano player. And he played for a lot of the giants around there. And by him, a friend of my family, well, he would, you know, I'd sneak in there. He'd let me come on in there, stand around the piano, just let him play. And my cousin, they'd come in there, you know what I mean? Oh, she had two boys, you know, they'd grown. They'd get out when they got ready. Or they was married. Okay, well, they'd want to run me away, you know, make me go home. But he, you know, Tell him to all let him stand around here. He may come to be a musician someday. And he'd let me stand around maybe 25 or 30 minutes, something like that, and then he'd tell me I'd have to cut out, you know, make sure you go home. Now. I'm going home, you know. But I just, I, if I went to a store and it was somebody playing an instrument on the way, I had to stop and listen. I had to stop and listen. Then they'd ask me, say, well, why it taking you so long to come back with what we sent you after? I said, oh, well, the store was crowded. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't tell them that I'd stop listening to the music. But, and my mother, she didn't want me to play around the house. They'd make too much noise. Yeah. Well, I'd always get outside and play my guitar. You know what I mean? On the wood pile, I'd either get out in the old back house I had back then. Sometimes come out, I'd run me out of there. Finally, I learned. And uh, I went back to Mississippi on my own. Let's see. Okay. Come back round here, you know, man, and uh, Robert Nighthawk, man, when I was late a year, Robert Nighthawk was around there, you know, and I bought me a new amplifier, a new guitar, and went there, and I said, well, I don't think I'm good enough to be on the air or play with these guys like this. So I went and talked to them about it. I said, what can you play? I said, well, play just about anything you play. They said, well, you, we ain't gonna let you play on the air with us now. I said, tell you what do, you wait, and then when we get off air, you going around to my house, and then we'll, See, what can you do? Everything he named, I could play it. So he told me, said, well, okay, you got a job. Then you can work with me, and then work with the King Biscuit Boy. You know, on the radio, hell nine. Nah. Well, Robert Nighthawk, he's one of the best. He was one of the best. You know what I mean? He, he take the show everywhere he went. And he was one of the best, and well, after I come to be as good as I thought I was, well, he wanted me in his band, so on that, well, yeah, since he was the best, well, I stuck with him. I played him 10 years. He was a slide guitar player, real after slide guitar blues player and singer. Well, after I started playing with Robert Nighthawk, well, finally, we parted, you know, from playing together. And I was playing in Mississippi and here in Arkansas. And I finally left him in St. Louis, Missouri. See, I came back. To hell, and then, well, then I went back again to St. Louis, Missouri. When I went playing around there in Missouri with different guys, like around Washington, Missouri, Troy, Bowling Green, and Robinsonville, and just all around, and playing in East St. Louis a lot, and with different other guys. And from that, well, I just there wasn't no other way from it but just stick with the music. This is new. And I was a kid, they used to pick out now all across the hill, and I'd have a head cap and pull corn and 
for Big P's and uh, work out there for him. Another guy called Kelso is work out there for him, planting grains and different stuff like that. And this is an old Steel Rose Cafe. I used to live right down back there on the first and Claiborne, right there by the FO oil station used to be back there. All along here, that's why I used to walk along when I was a kid, and since I've been grown, you know, I mean, in my teenage days, and since I've been in my 20s, I've just straight up and down these streets here. This was once called, the colored people's name, the White Town, and back there, father was Colored Town. That was West Helena. All of this is West Helena, but the thing is between the two, they called one White Town, one Colored Town, see. So if you say, where are you going? They say, well, I'm going to White Town. Well, they know that man coming up in the end of the stove. There you know, were stoves down there, too, but, you know, so well, where, you, where, where was you last night? I was in Color Town. I was on the line, see? Well, I mean, when you say you was on the line, they know where you was. You know my nights have been so lonely Ever since my baby been gone away You know my nights have been so lonely Just might come back home someday. Wide open. Gambling giants wide open. Sundays and all other days and policy rackets and you know called number rackets, you know. All that was uh uh wide open. Everything. Whatever you had the money for, it was there. In uh Hell and West Hell. You could go any place and mostly and buy some whiskey or uh, whatnot. And, Plenty of rooming houses and plenty of sawmills was there at that particular time. Many janks was open, honky tonks as we call them back then. Many of them was open. It was a real good place to play for any musician that wanted to get a, you know what I mean, wanted to get started playing, maybe on radio uh, with bands around there and, and played at them janks in places like in Helena and all around West Helena and out you know, on the farms and whatnot. It was a real good place for that. But it just never was a good place for me to live. I never did gain anything by fooling around there. See, the things that I wanted, it wasn't that. I wanted to become a good star, and I knew I couldn't be one for stay there. Nobody that to make this stuff. Nothing there. Chicago was the place. Well, that's why I wanted to get, but I didn't, you know, didn't have the opportunity. A different guy would tell me about it, and then I mean, get started in recording, and you could get started in move it, movies or whatever, if you good enough, you know what I mean. Well, that's what I figured that, that would have been the place for me, but somehow or another, I just didn't make it. driving along now, we just came out to uh, Arkansas and Mississippi Bridge there, and we're driving along now on 61 North, and we're going to go to Clayton, Mississippi. We're going to find the house that I once grew up in a little bit and see if I want to show why I first learned to play a dilly bow, show in the face of the door that I made my first dilly bow and started into trying to learn to be a musician. Also, I'm going to show you if the house is still around, where some of the country breakdown houses where we used to play on Saturday nights and Sunday nights. Also, we're going to see some of the people that knew me back then when I was a kid growing up. Also, we're going to try to see if we can go to the school where I have attended when I was a kid. I lived over here oh, something like four years. And we're going to 
check out the place and see what all can we find. Let's see what's here and see what is not y'all what's going on. Billy Bowes, uh one string instrument outside the wall with a boom wire that came off a boom that was on boom back in those days. You take one strand of wire and you take two nails and you wrap it around each end of the wire and then drive it in the wall and you tighten it with snuff all our brick. Then you take a small vanilla cake for your bottom and use as a slide. And play with one hand, use the other hand for a slide. And it makes pretty fast music. Something like the African type bowl. But anyway, it makes pretty good music. Something to learn on, that's what started me. Clayton's uh, Black Hill service station, and we've owned the little row of blacktop that's going around to where the uh, Hood's plantation where I used to live. Central, and that's the first time that I had ridden a train from the south to the north. There. That's the first train I rode going north to the Illinois Central. And I've taken it eight miles from here, a little place called Tunica, Mississippi. I didn't like the type of farm work that they did. See, now, I didn't mind the farm work, but the way they was doing the farm work. See, they work all the year, and then at the end of the year, they didn't get nothing to mount anything, see? And I can understand that, see? And I told them then, when I was a small boy, that if I could make my living any other way without that farming on, you know, plantation, I, I think I would do it, because I didn't like working for the other fellas too much. It was okay working for the other fellas if you get paid, you see, but think about it. At the end of the year, not many times they said, well, we didn't clear anything out of a crop. And I said, well, I done worked all the year, where'd it go? See, that's what I understand about it. So that would make me don't, now, if it's my own farm, yeah, I like it. But somebody else's farm, I don't like that. Uh, 1942. Oh, you came back? Uh, yeah, I came, yeah, I came back and lived right here with him. And, uh, Used to be another little old one-room house right over there on that little gravel, so gravel road right over there. And me and him lived in there for a while. Me and my brother. I don't know who lives here now, but... This is the house right here? This is the house right here. I don't know who lives here now. A little bit of action to see. Let me see who lives here. Mo's wife and daughter live. I want to see if this is him. Yeah, I know he died, but I wonder did they, where, where did they, where do they live at? They live, uh, you have to go up here to Evenville and go out to number four. Evenville? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did you know Willie? Uh-huh. You do? Uh-huh, I know you. Yeah, I just want to see that you know me. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Well, now I got to see what's your name now, because I forgot it. This is Plumber, you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. My uh-huh. goodness. Yeah. You know yeah, I know who you. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, see, I'm glad to see you. Yeah, you shake your hand. I ain't see seen you. you so long. <laughs> I saw you one morning on television. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> Mose was living that time. I said, Mose, I saw C.D.L. on television this morning. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I said, well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is my wife back here. Oh, you yeah. Hi. Yeah. Yes, 
<laughs> well, yeah, you remember W. C. Clay? You know we call him Clay. You know he used to play over down here on the broadcast station a lot of times. You know, for a long time. W. C. Clay? Yeah. You know he stayed down there on Flower Lake. Stayed down on Flower Lake right there, not from Wilder Gallery. You remember Wilder Gallery? Yeah, you I get that, huh? Oh, well, he used to stay at the next house from Wilder Gallery. I do, but you know, ain't nobody down on Fly Lake now. No? Ain't nobody down there. Oh, my goodness. All them folks, you know, Michelle Wilson, he died, and mm. when Michelle Wilson and Sue died, them folks just got Listen. together. Listen. Mm -hmm. And the house I, when well, the house where Miss Adam, he stayed a long time with that Perkins house down there. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the house that's getting a film on. No, no, they can't get no film on this. It's gone. Mm. Yeah. 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 Before he died, he tore all them over. And that's the house down. I used to live in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's gone now, so I guess we won't be getting a film out here. Um, what about that old house Miss Minnie Remlin used to live in? It's gone. Oh, my goodness. Oh, ain't no houses back down there, man. Mm -hmm. See, after the people's all moved out of them, they just tore them down and went to work in that land, putting beans and stuff in that land. Oh man, nothing in all that place is what gone. You, what, oh, you just wanted to ride over the place. No, see, they want to get this film for television. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, they want to get this for television, and uh, I'm finishing up the film, at least, you know, I'm finishing it up, you know, I done did the other part. Oh, yeah. And, I'm, and this is the last go round of this. Mm -hmm. So and then I don't know when it's going to be shown on TV, but it will be. Let me ask, do Moe's Ross still live around here? Uh-huh. They do? Yeah. Now you go back out there and hit this flag. You remember that house used to sit up on that hill line? Yeah, there? yeah. Well, that's where Mo Ross stayed mm -hmm. up on well, that hill. used to call a big house. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, that's where Mo Ross stayed. Oh, stay. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Well, is that stove still down there? It's down there, but it's not in operation. Well, I know, but I just want to know if that's so I won't get lost. It's been oh, so yeah. long since I've been here. Oh, yeah, that stove is still there, but Moses up on that hill. Up on that hill, but mm -hmm. called a big house. Yeah. Okay, all, all right, then. Yeah, all right, man. So glad I saw you. I'm so mm -hmm. glad I see you too. This is the store right here where I chopped corn down on the low end of the farm down there and made five dollars. It's the first store right here that I ever draw the paycheck right there. That store right there, five dollars. And I went out to Clayton's and bought me a cap, suspenders, and a pair of pants and everything. That got a whip when I got back home. I stayed so late. <laughs> but anyway, that's the, that that was the store right there. Well, this is it. This is the blacksmith shop where they used to ring the bell before you get up in the morning at 4 o'clock, ring it for 12, and ring it in the evening at 4, or 5 o'clock, where you come in and bring the mule. See? Time to quit. And they hear that bell, they, they, they go to take out the mule and bring them in. <laughs> had the bell all over the farm. See, this is not the only bell they had. Now, see, they had a bell on this end and the bell on the other end. See? So that's the way it was. And, well, these abbots, you know what I mean, these abbots, and why I say abbots, because they, they, they saw to you having food and clear just a little money, you know, enough to keep you there. Well, you, you couldn't get rich here, I can tell you that now. No. No, you couldn't get rich here. But, you know, a lot of people loved it here. A lot of people just liked it here. Didn't think there's no other place like here. And some still think that. Now, look how long that girl lady been here. She was a girl born here, grew up here. Moe's Ross was born here. Ike Ross was born here. Moe's Ross still lives here, and he's one of the oldest boys. He still lives here. <laughs>
a shot of mold there. I want to talk to you a minute. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You heard him Pine Bluff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I eat a couple of rice? Yeah, he, he, he eat rice, man. But you know, that's kind of one half rice. So I write him a letter, and I notice, oh, Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> and this some... Show the door, no. Yeah, I know him a long time. I ain't kidding, boss, in a time. No. You still playing? Yeah. What you play, guitar and harp, too? Yeah, guitar. No, I just play guitar alone. No, I've got harp, but I don't harp for you. Show the door. Plummer told me once she sent you on the TV. Or yeah, something. I yeah. just saw. Just talked to her a while ago. Yeah, she told me yeah. she sent you. Yeah, I just talked to her a while ago. She's up there giving some green. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. she's on TV. Yeah, uh -huh. but let's see what I'm talking about. I didn't know who you were. Uh -huh. What time you been on TV? Both. Yeah, I have been on TV up there in Memphis. Yeah, I've been on. I've been on TV a bunch of times in Memphis. Who knows? Yeah. I'll be, I'll, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be on 10 sometimes. Yeah, I'll be on 10 sometimes, and I'll be on 7 sometimes, 11. I, 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 I had to go to New York and do a round. I didn't get a chance to come. Oh, you been up there? Yeah, I just come back here. We got uh, 13th of October. Oh, okay. yeah. I ain't got to go back though until spring. You remember W.C. Clay? Yeah. Huh? He didn't do it. Yeah, he didn't do it. About three, three years or more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He died in the office, thought they brought his body back, right over there on the hill, you know, yeah. as you go this way from mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. So he did, he did it. Mm. This is the place where I went to school at. This was uh, old uh, Kyle Chapel School, right here, where well, you see them bushes out there. That was Kyle Chapel School. I went to school there when I was seven years old, six years old, on up until I was about, oh, I'd say eight years old. Right there. All of it done growed up now. You can't hardly see where the school was. The walk here every morning, walk back home in the evening. The Rosses, Moe's Ross, what we just talked to, he used to walk it with me, you know, him and his brothers and sisters. They all of us used to walk here to the school. Okay, I want to tell you a little bit about house parties and what it was like back in them those days. This, this house right back of me here, uh, that's where Robert Nighthawk have played at, and uh, for house parties. And this is the type of house, and some worse, that I have played here in Mississippi, right here on the same farm. And uh, this is the place where people used to go on Saturday nights because they didn't have any other place to go. Uh, because if they went to town, they could only stay in town until 9 o'clock, and then they come back out here uh, until 12 at the, at the most. They come back out here, and then they go the house party, what they call gyps or a dance. And this house in back of me is the type of house and other houses of the same type, same description, that I played in the, on the same farm and on other farms here in Mississippi. Okay, this house party, well, people would come out of town in like 9 and 10 o'clock like that, and they'd come to the house party. Many of them wouldn't go to town on Saturday night because they'd have more pleasure coming to a house party like this house here in the back of me here. You see, in that way, they wouldn't be worried about getting arrested or getting put in jail or whatnot. They just come in and have their fun until all night sometime, until daylight the next morning. And then maybe on a Sunday, they'd be there for all day Sunday, and Sunday night until time comes for them to go in and they go, so they could go to work Monday morning. Some, sometimes it'd be 60 or 70 people be there, and sometimes it'd be less. You know, sometimes maybe be old 15 or 20. You know what I mean? But Saturday, you know, people like to go to them house parties back then. Because I used to play for Atla King, live here on this place. See, I played a little bit. Willie Jackson run a little thing one time, a little bit, and I played a little bit there. So another fellow used to live here up on up in a place up there for, called Bob Riley. He used to have a little something going on there. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to play that. Right up this road here, this little gravel road right in front of this store. Yeah, that was up this road here. A fella called Richard Doodler. He was had a place there. And uh, I and James Trump was playing there. And there's another Jack was down the same road to my right here. And they was having a dance. And so he, he the boy had come on up there where I was because there wasn't nobody at his place. And they had a fight there that night. And guy got shot. And, and girl got shot. Okay. And... There's another boy called Black Robert. He 
was sitting sitting down side of me on the floor because I didn't drink whiskey. And, and you know, he sat down there, you know, because he played guitar. And when people give me whiskey, I'd give it to him. And they got to fighting and shooting. And this boy jumped up from down side of me. And I don't know where he went. No, none of us never saw him no more from that day until this one. None of us never saw him again. And used to be a fellow there called Edgar. He had a big pistol in his pocket. He went and closed the door and said, if anybody come in, he was going to shoot. And that had me hemmed up. And then I'd walk on crutches and had me hemmed up. And then I couldn't get nowhere. <laughs> so I just stayed inside the house. People get shot because if I went out door, I knew I was going to get shot. So I stayed in the house. Well, see, the way it is, we used to be here in Mississippi was all the way bootlegging. There wasn't no license and anything like that you could get for selling whiskey around here on these farms and selling homebrew or beer or whatever you had. You had, you know what I mean, they mostly made the whiskey bootleg and made the homebrew what they call homemade beer, and they'd sell that, and, you know, to make the money. They'd run the dice game in the back, and uh, that's how they cut off on the dice game, that's how they'd make a living. It's like this house party is what we used to play here. Well, I played at house party recently in Pine Bluff uh, for a fellow at Robert Love's house. And uh, he, they, back then, they played to make a little money off of whiskey and a little home brew. Well, he played, he, he gave, the, he had a little bit, little wine and a uh, little beer, stuff like that, and make a little money on it whenever anybody come along that want any. He'd buy wine for a dollar and five cents a pint, and he'd sell it for two dollars. And he, he'd buy a beer like seventy-five cents or fifty cents a can, and then he'd sell it for a dollar. Whiskey, a dollar thirty-five cents, half pint, he'd sell it for three dollars. Oh, and that's how he make him a little money. Bootlegging. Yeah, bootlegging. <laughs> in Pine Bluff, they was doing the late thing. These late years, it wasn't doing the old time thing. Because they used to do a lot of two-step back when I was playing here, I don't do a lot of two-step jitterbug and stuff like that, but they don't do that nowadays, not in house parties like in Arkansas.
One of them fellas that was sitting there outside of me in the chair, his name was Son. Well, he didn't know me for a long time. And he just liked my music. And he always, whenever he can, if I'm around, he, to get there, he always come around and listen to me play because he remember the times back. So even when I play, he's coming around me while I play, he's playing at house party. And so and wherever I be now, he always show up because he likes that type of music. And many other people there, like Jimmy, he likes that type of music. Robert Love, Maxine, and uh, Beaver, many other there. Birdman, all of them like that type of music. That's why they be around there when I'm going to play. If they can get there, they do. Welcome to the next beat. You know what I'm talking about, Tommy? Go 
out to places, you know, like clubs and stuff like that, where they like to get to a private place and see where they can just, you know, kind of let their hair down, so to speak. They had a good time, you know what I mean? And we're still talking about it. I don't know when that's going to happen again. I don't know I can tell it. Watch your stuff, you like the instrument, your guitar, don't forget the piece hung up in and tap your chords and all like that. They want to play your guitar and hey, whatever your instrument you have, they want to play it and show off and all what they want to do, what they can do. Blue musicians don't play house parties no more now because there's not nothing in it. Yeah, it's died out now. People left the farms and they moved to the cities and the music went to the cities, such as Chicago, New York, California, and different places like that. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Well, there's not much, nothing going on now on the farm. Most of the houses are gone, the people are gone. The houses that I used to play in around here, they're all gone. The house that I used to live in right down this road was in, in facing me here to my right, that house is gone. When I first started playing, made did it both side of the wall. That house is gone now. Nobody lives there no more. Back those days, not playing with Robert Nighthawk, to give you a good illustration of what it was like, you go to a place and play, and they didn't have much money, as they do now, but they'd fix your supper for you, your dinner, and they'd fix your place to sleep and eat and stuff like that, and, you know, give you a nice time while you were there. And you come back home, you rent, you pay your rent, because it wasn't amount to much, and you could eat off of that little money. and. Things was good back then. 
you know what I mean? People was enjoying it. Things was good back then, but it's still better now. Things was good. A lot of times you had to be careful about the places you worked. But still, they mostly always treat a musician nice. They never bother him, you know, the musician. But now, a lot of times, if it get too rough, you'd have to get your stuff and get out. See? A lot of times, police would come in and raid the places, and they never put the musician in jail. They just tell them to take the stuff down, go back where they came from. You see, we just take down and leave. But other than, other than that, we didn't have no trouble. Yeah, parties and giants and stuff like that because they'd had a bootleg whiskey and then they hadn't went up and talked to the police or the law or whatever you might call them about doing these things. A lot of people just go out and do it on their own, you know, for consent. But you had to get consent from police or whoever you was, you know, living on this farm or whatnot. A lot of them didn't do that and they get raided. Then you just have to take your stuff down and leave. But other than that, it was a lot of fun. Didn't make no lot of money, didn't make no big living, but it was a lot of fun. But nowadays, it's not part of fun, it's for the money and for the living. I'm a Delta Blues musician. I play the blues the way it is. See, my type of blues that I play is, uh, it tells a story about what we are doing right now, finding out about these uh, places to play like this house right here in front of me and other places here, private homes that I played, and the things that people went through back in those days. Well, the songs of the blues is made concerning of people that what they went through with back those days. It told the story of how they lived, what they, you know, what they could expect to live by, everything. It tells it all. Well, I had a rough childhood. When I, was, I had a rough way to go when I was growing up, I didn't have, you know, what I mean, I had it hard. And, I decided uh, when I was a kid that my destination, I know where I wanted to go and I'm still trying. I know which way I wanted to go because there's one thing about it. Everybody had to make their place in this world and I had to make mine. Whether I could walk or not, I had to make my place in this world and find my own way and I found it. And this is my way of doing things for myself. So learning to be a musician, it come to be a job and it also it is a, it's a living. My hopes for being a top-notch blues player seems to be going good. I've been in New York, played New York, Boston, Massachusetts, played in uh, Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, Newport, Rhode Island. When I go back in the spring, I'll be going on tour again. I'll play some of them same places, but I will be playing more places when I go back this time in the spring. I'll consider myself as a good musician blues musician. I don't think nobody else has my style. I think I have a different style from any blues musician. And I think my style will take me over.
I have a, a question I want to tell about my family, too. I'm a, I'm a J.D. Sanders' daughter from, a, she was from a Tennessee. And my mother was uh, Mississippi, but I was born down in Wabash, Arkansas, a Napa Pittman farm, which is my grandfather. And I was raised in uh, West Tona, partly in West Tona and Wabash. And so my son was born in Wabash, C. Dale Davis, dad is in John Davis, the grandmother, George Ann Watson. And so I am the mother of C. Dale Davis. And uh, this is my original home. his music is the best there is. There's no better. And so I enjoy his music all the, whenever he plays. Every time when I can go, I like to go because I love and So that's what made me get the knife. We, you know, I found out I could slide up and down a string with it and mess around there. And then I developed a play that way. I play the heavy type uh, guitar, bass and lead. And uh, I'll, uh, I'm gonna give you a little what I'm talking about. I call it like this. Sometimes I bring a split across, sometimes I carry it angular. Why I do it like that so I can get a particular string that I need for my. Then I get them all if I want to. I can get just some of them and I can get just half of them. <laughs> I test either one I want to, same as you would with your finger. But only way, on this, uh, you can do more with your finger than you can with a bar knife, if you understand that. Uh, and this is my way, left-handed, two fingers, I want a hell of a butter knife, that's all I use. <laughs> Mother and father, my daddy was named John Sam, mother named Idella. And so uh, this is a home, and this is where I live in West Tolman here, on 421 South Corinthian. And see there, Davis, I have a picture of him when he was 17. 
And uh, I just now remember what year it was taken, but it's back, you know, in, in the forties. But I don't forget when it was. I'm also proud of him. And so that was his talent, you know. When a little bitty kid, he started that music, you see. He'd tap my brum and he'd make, take a barrel hook, you know, a, bar, a hook off a barrel, and he'd take them string, tap my brum. And then he'd put two strings on it. And then he'd have it up outside on the porch outside the house picking it. And I'd be looking for my brum, and he'd be done took it and made him some strings. <laughs> I saw the ball and got my broom and I tore the whip. the broom. <laughs> playing the blues, singing Delta Blues for a long time. I always liked that music, and uh, we had one of those wind-up graphophones that you put a record on, and I'd always play that. My cousin never had one, so they'd always keep... And I'd always play that. My cousin never had one, so they'd always keep different blues out of the records there and make a good blue. they go to... Tunica, Mississippi, and buy it and bring it back and would play it, and that would inspire me, like Robert Nighthawk's records and Charlie Patton and Brian Lemon Jefferson and different other guys, Spike Brothers and whatnot. And there used to be a fella lived down, I oh, say about maybe seven, eight blocks down the little gravel road from where we lived. He had a guitar, the name was Jake Douglas, and he let me strum around on this guitar, you know, and I liked it, and you know what I mean, and down through the years, and I got about 14 years of, old, years of age, you know, I mean, I bought me a guitar, paid two, two and a half for it. So I had pulled it in 1936. And that's what called me that couldn't play no more right-handed like you know, supposed to. I had to turn the guitar around, play left-handed, and learn all over again. And my uh, mother had a silverware set there, and I kind of, you know, kind of lifted one of her knives, you know, and, <laughs> Found out I developed a play like that, so I still do it now. Couldn't use my right arm as well as I should. Couldn't use my fingers and my right hand good. And that, so that caused me to turn the guitar around and use my left hand. And I couldn't couldn't note the guitar with my right hand. 